Okay, hello everyone. I'm with uh, two new friends of mine here. I'm in Washington State, they're in California, and it's a father and a son, which is awesome. And we've got, is it Wyatt and Ethan? Did I say that right? Yes, yep, that's right. Okay, good to see you guys. And you're in California. And you were sharing a little bit with me before we started, um, just about some things, Wyatt, that you had gone through uh, over the past month or so. Maybe some of those things can come out as we talk. Um, and also how you introduced your son, Ethan, uh, to the course um, on freedom from impurity. You know, it's, I was telling you earlier, and I really appreciate the fact that you care enough about your son to enter into a dialogue and discussion about this. And I think that's an example for many fathers. So um, what, what led you to do that? Well, I went through the course, um, I believe it was towards the end of last year. And um, I mean, those three elements, you know, uh, washing at the cross, uh, walking in the spirit, warring in the flesh. The big one for me was washing at the cross, just changing my thinking. You know, there's so much shame that's involved. And so when the Lord started just changing my thinking and, and helping me to focus on uh, just washing free of that shame and that guilt and the regret, because this is something that has traveled with me, I guess you could say, since co the days of college when, you know, internet was first discovered and access was abundant. Um, so when I went through the course, just seeing victory, um, like sustained victory, because throughout this year, it, it, there's all through COVID, everything is just, there, there's been that, that victory, that freedom that is exciting. And, and I, and I wanted to have, I wanted to share that with my kids, but my, my big concern was, is remembering back to when I took it. Well, is it, is it too deep for them? Are they going to really get it? Cause I got three teenage boys. Uh, 13, he's the 14 year old, and then a 15 year old. Um, but they're in the middle of struggling with some things that we found out um, on the computers and devices. And it's like, okay, you know what, let's just do this and I'll do it with them. And, um, you know, they, they just, when you just finished the course a couple of days ago, I believe. And we're starting like the, the second chapter or whatever, I guess you could call it. And the key yeah. for me is um, walking with them through it not just, okay, you do it, and then let me know how it goes. Um, but, yeah. uh, but, but walking with them uh, through it, and then just, uh, you know, getting their feedback, you know, how, is there anything you don't understand? Is there anything, um, but just really, just wanting them to experience what I experienced. I, as I do so appreciate that. Uh, as I was mentioning to you earlier, so many fathers relegate this role to some other spiritual authority or somebody in Sunday school or something. And uh, Wyatt, I, I really commend you uh, for wanting to interact with your sons in this way. And Ethan, uh, I believe you were saying that it's helped you as well. And you want to share a little bit about that. And then, and then we kind of agreed together to look into God's word uh, too, but what are your what are your thoughts here initially, Ethan? You're 14, right? Yep. Um, so first, I started off going to church. Like, I didn't really want to go. I just went just because I thought I, I because I felt that I was forced to go. But then once, but then um, soon when we were doing homeschool, um, I was in, introduced to pornography, and I. And it just killed me every time I did it. Yeah. I, I literally hated it, and but I kept doing it. Yeah. And it it just it was a struggle, and soon when my dad introduced me to this, I I haven't I haven't done it ever since, and uh, it's just really set me free of all my guilt and shame, and um. I just thank you for making this whole thing. It, it's really changed my life. I, I just can't thank you enough. <laughs> well, that's just really good to hear. And, you know, Ethan, a lot of 14-year-olds, when their father would come to them and say, hey, I want to go through a course and study and discuss this with you, would say absolutely not, would have no interest 
And so that tells me that God really worked in your heart and you aren't saying no, dad, you're saying thank you, dad, uh, which is huge. So um, I really appreciate that. We uh, had talked earlier about looking at Romans chapter five, uh, starting at verse six. Let's just use this passage to frame further discussion. Uh, I'll start with verse six here. And Paul says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. And Ethan, as you were talking about, you know, getting involved in pornography and you hated it and it was disgusting and, and yet we kept doing it. Um, this is what it means to be powerless. Um, what is your guys' understanding and experience with this word powerless? Um, I guess you could say like when, when you're looking at it, you feel that you cannot stop it. I, I guess you could say that like you feel that um th this this is some people feel like this is this is themselves so that may be what they are supposed to that what they're meant to do but it's actually not true because god made everyone for a certain purpose and everyone can be changed no matter if they ha have killed um like a million people um if they um uh cheated on their wife five times um it could be anything God can still save your life because he's changed mine for doing it for, for lying, stealing. I, I basically have broken every single commandment and he forgave me for breaking every single one of those. So it just makes you feel a lot better. Wiley, I, I think we, we might have a preacher on our hands. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for me, just recognizing, I mean, he's a little bit more new to the exposure. Mine's been a little bit, uh, it's been quite a bit longer. Um, and mine was never like a, you know, a daily obsession. It was more, um, I guess, binging on it and then being convicted and then completely backing away and then going back, you know, it's just this. So there was always this element of, you know, wanting victory, crying out to the Lord for help. But then, you know, when you have that idol and you grasp onto it, you know, the Lord's not going to help unless you're willing to, to let go of that. Amen. That it's that element of repentance. Like, you know, we're going to hold on to it. God help me. God help me. Well, it's like, you're still holding on to it and you're still turning to it. And, you know, um, sin is what we do when we're, when we're not pleased with the Lord. When, when we don't find our pleasure in him. And that's mm -hmm. just recognizing that he's the source of everything we need. So if we're still holding on to that for comfort, you know, um, you know, I, so I think that's, uh, I'm not, I think I answered your question. Maybe I did it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. What you talked about is we're grasping an idol while we're saying, God help. <laughs> And, uh, you know, it, it takes power, you know, to, to break the power of sin in our life, to break free from that idol. Um, if you look at verse six, and I don't know what version you guys have, but there's a solution presented to our powerlessness. So what is the solution that you guys see presented there? Yeah, Romans 5, 6. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, I'm reading from the Christian Standard Version. Okay. For a while we were still helpless. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Okay, so what do you see there? And the, the problem is that we're helpless. What do you see as the solution? Um, that Christ sent his son to die for not just one person, not just uh, some super sinful person but every single person ungodly yeah, right. no matter how righteous you were he still died for you mm -hmm. yeah christ died. that's right that's exactly right the reason i'm asking is because the world has so many false solutions did you guys ever um involve yourselves in any of those and by that i mean psychological solutions where you you look into the chemical makeup of the brain and the 
the addiction cycles and 12 step groups. And there's just a plethora of worldly solutions presented. Had you guys done any of that at all or not? Some of those worldly solutions are found in the church. Yes. I think, you know, I've, I've, I've been a part of men's accountability groups where you talk about the struggle, but there's no, there's no plan to put it to death or no plan for, to make war, no plan for that. It's just, you know, it's awareness and there, there's no victory and um, there's support, but there's no victory. And um, that, that's been a lot of my exposure with lots of different churches is uh, there's, there's lots of quote unquote support groups, but there's not really any progress or victory or freedom that, that is long lasting, maybe temporary. It's, it's more after the fact, like, oh, well, how did you mess up this week? Let's all talk about it. And it was just like, you know, I almost found myself like, what's, what's the point? Exactly. Yeah, that's been my experience as well. But we look here into the scriptures and we see that there's a solution, which is the death of Jesus Christ. Um, and so think about this with me a little bit, because they seem disconnected. You know, I was talking with a lady the other day and we're talking about weight loss. And she was like, I was introduced to the cross. And I thought, what does that have to do with weight loss? You know, and, and so sometimes we can go, what does this have to do with you know, my struggle with impurity and uh, Ethan with, you know, you're talking about viewing pornography and wanting to stop. But as you think about this, the solution being Christ died for the ungodly, the, the term substitution comes in here. He died for us. He took our place. He, he hung on that cross instead of us out of love. But not only that, but you and I hung there with him, our old self, right? Our old man, our old nature was crucified with Christ. So if you think about that, what difference does that make in, in actually living out this life? In other words, what does it matter that Christ died for the ungodly? What thoughts do you have about that? And we're just talking together. I'm not trying to put you on the spot or anything. But talked about that last night because we, we were talking about the gospel, because it's the purity follow-up. I think lesson one talks about, you know, how does the gospel give us the power to have victory over our sin? Because it's, yeah. you think of the gospel many times as, well, it saves us. The gospel's for the unchristian. You believe to get saved. Like, church is really good at discussing that. But then we don't talk about the transforming power of the gospel. And so I, we talked about that last night. And I think ultimately it's about you know, when you find yourself in that struggle, that struggle with lust, like Christ paid for that. He overcame. And so it's, it's through what he's done that we can have that victory through what he's done for us that we could not do for ourselves. So that's how it applies now, not just before we knew him. That is so powerful. I think that's probably the least understood truth in Christianity um, in the sense of we all know that Christ died for unbelievers to save them from the wrath of God, which is important, save them from hell. But once we become believers, you know, we go on from that message and we move on to the deeper truths. Um, and in reality, it's the same message that saves us that also sets us apart it breaks the power of sin um if you look at this word powerless which is what we were ethan you had a good description of this word powerless but look at look at jesus as he went to the cross and what you're seeing is someone who looks powerless he's hanging there in weakness um he is of all people now unable to lift a finger for himself. Now, of course, we know differently. He's still Almighty God, but he has taken our place. And in so doing, he has put to death our uh, old self so that the transformation happens right there at the cross. 
as the Holy Spirit shows us that we died with him. Uh, Ethan, can you describe, is, is that your experience? Is this resonating with you or how, how would you describe this? Well, um, I kind of, I kind of liked how you said how, um, he, he looked powerless, but, um, I guess you could say he was powerful in that situation because he was the, he was, um, willing to go into that situation and he was praying to God to take his cup from him, but he still went through it and he didn't even heal himself. He, He didn't heal a single wound. He didn't. He's buried through that entire thing just for us. That's exactly right. Doesn't that take your breath away? (laughs) It's just, what kind of love does that, you know? And so um, verse seven, do you guys want to read that? Do you have that verse seven? Uh, Yeah. Yeah, I'll read it. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. I I guess I can go to eight. Sure. Okay. But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So I think he's highlighting in verse seven, the fact that we were not righteous. As it says in verse six, we were ungodly, unholy, unrighteous. And isn't it amazing that our unrighteousness is, in a sense, if you want to think of it this way, the magnet that drew Christ to the cross, yeah. um, that he saw us in our sin, perishing, in bondage, unable to break free, powerless, dead, and he made a beeline for the cross. Mm-hmm. He loved us unto death and back, and that is what changes our hearts isn't it how can you guys think of you know i think in the very first lesson we talk about a heart change um i know why this is um basic you know for you um ethan probably for you as well but just as you look at the cross describe the heart change that comes to us as we view the cross of christ Well, um, when you, when you look at the, at the cross, like your, your whole life is put, I guess you could say you feel more free, but when you put your life into sin, you, you just feel terrible. You, I, I'm saying this from experience. I, I I just felt terrible every day. Uh, Yeah. And I'll, I'll piggyback off that. Um, you know, being a pastor, we you should be sharing the gospel frequently. Every every time you open up the word, you you make a beeline towards to the cross. So we're not I'm not it's not anything new to me. But what was transforming for me is in in the midst of that shameful state, picturing it really in the midst of temptation, picturing what Christ did. Like training myself training myself to think in the midst of that you know lord when i'm being tempted help me to picture you on the cross and it's just those that power of lust is like eradicated (laughs) when i think of my lord bloody on the cross dying for not just sin in general but my sin the one that i'm struggling with it's, it's, it becomes personal. And so you can understand it up here, but when it's personal, like not just sin, but my sin, the, the one I'm struggling with right now, Lord, give me freedom from this and help me to remember. And that to me was transforming. And I, I just really something, um, you know, um, so one time he actually had um, a broken valve in his heart. And it just really just spoke to me because because we had because um, when we when we are in sin we feel broken, but then um, when we go to God it's a, it's like fixing fixing it it's a like a heart. fixation a hard yeah yeah that's good 
That's awesome. That is truly awesome. And that's exactly what happens. Uh, and I, I love how you are relating this to transforming us because it's not just for salvation, you know, as if we were to come to the cross, receive forgiveness, and then forget all about it. Um, this is continuing to be the power of God for us who believe, and that's important. Um, we didn't read verse 5, but I want to bring it in here. Um, hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. You know, I've often noticed, you guys probably have too, but when you discuss the cross of Christ, the Holy Spirit is not far away. Um, he is taking the message of the cross and pouring out the love of God into our hearts by that message. So we talk about washing at the cross. Here we, we did this together. We saw that we were powerless, but Christ came and, and hung on the cross for us to rescue us. He rose from the dead on the third day. We rose in him, a new person, and then he gave the Holy Spirit. One of the roles of the Holy Spirit, you can see here, pour out the love of God. Dump, I love this word. Wyatt, you probably have done some word studies in this word, pour out. But it means to gush over, uh, to lavish upon. In other words, it's not a sprinkle. Um, he is like a waterfall, uh, pouring the love of God into our hearts. But look at the comparison between verse 5 and verse 8. You guys have that? You want to read verse 8? God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You see the connection there between verse 5 and verse 8? In other words, the, the way I see it is that the Holy Spirit is pouring God's love into our heart by showing us that Christ died for us. In other words, God demonstrates his own love for us by showing us the cross. And the Holy Spirit uses that message to, put, to pour out God's love. Is that resonating with you guys as well? I'll, I'll, my youngest son... Um, there was what, what really impacted him the most, that element of, of pouring out is, um, you know, the first element of washing at the cross, you know, he, he talks about it. What really impacted him was that it's a continuous fountain. So I'm just mm -hmm. thinking of that element of, of pouring out, like we can go to that fountain and wash clean at any time at any interval anytime we're struggling so that it, it's it's ever flowing <laughs> yeah because overflowing and ever if, flowing. if let's say you fill a bathtub full of water and you never drain that if you keep bathing in that then it'll just keep getting more dirty but but um if it's if, it, if you use a fountain it'll just flow and just continuously flowing so it'll always stay clean mm. <sighs> <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> that was awesome. It's like putting the chlorine in the pool. It, it cleans it cleans the pool and can also kill some um, some bugs that got in there. But yeah, this is this is the Holy Spirit revealing to you, Ethan, the the truth of of God's word and of the cross, and uh, that's really awesome. Um, so we've, we've talked a lot about washing at the cross and walking by the Spirit, of course. Then we're able to war against the flesh because it's the Holy Spirit's power in us, not the power of our flesh. Um, have you guys been experiencing some victories in warring against the flesh? Tell me a little bit about that. I'm sure a little bit about it. I mean, one main victory is just being free. I mean... <laughs> That's that's the that's the big one. It's like way up there. I mean, I mean, I guess you could say that's way up there, but I guess you could say heaven's higher because that's that's the best victory that you can get. Um, yeah, I but, think I think for us, I I wanted my kids to take it seriously because you know my experiences in church are with accountability men's group are is just it's not serious. 
uh, not serious enough. Like, like we're not making war, we're just aware. And, and awareness doesn't bring victory. Um, and so that's really where that concept of warring is like, we're in a war, you know? And we, we need to war against our flesh, like the source of our problems. You know, the heart is deceitful. So we minimize, we'll compare. Well, I'm not as bad because I, I mean, in college, you know, I was, I was around it a lot. I mean, people that were guys that were truly a, a serious addiction, you know, daily, several times a day. I mean, it's just very, so I, in my mind, well, I'm, I'm not as bad as them. So I'll just hold on to this, you know, even if it's periodically or, um, but that's, that's the lie of the enemy and just that and, element of needing to take it seriously. Yeah. Uh, there are also some kids my age who, who have this as a lifestyle, like, oh yeah, it's not that big of a deal. Um, but then there's these other kids that I know who are really struggling with, mm. with sin. They're, they're, they're just trying they don't even know the Lord. They're just, they're like, uh, I mean, Wesson does have one friend who's really um, struggling with sin and um, he doesn't know how to get out of it. Um, and he's like, and he's, and he just um, talks to Wesson saying, dude, how do you, how do you stop? Mm. Yeah. And the real answer is just God. Yeah. Uh, Wyatt, you talked about minimizing. Um, I'm, I'm not as bad as whoever. Uh, that only works until you come to the cross, um, right? Because at the cross, you see, oh, we all fall short. Wow. yeah, my sin is deserving of death. So we see the exceeding sinfulness of sin at the cross. But at the same time, we see our forgiveness and acceptance and our shame is removed, and our guilt is crucified. And so it, at the same time, hurts us and heals us. Um, and it, or you might say it crucifies us and brings us life. It, you know, if, if I were just to, to say to you guys, wow, that's disgusting, that's really, you know, and use those kind of words, we would be beat down, we would, we would agree, yeah, I know, it's really horrible, yeah, um, but it would leave us in that condition. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the cross shows us how exceedingly sinful it is, but it shows us that we are uh, rescued from it. You know, Jesus went into the darkness to rescue us out of it. So it's an amazing uh, and absolutely mysterious um, thing that happens at the cross. And uh, you know, and through the resurrection of Jesus. So you guys, as we bring this to a close, and by the way, I could talk with you guys all day. I'm absolutely loving uh, interacting with you. Um, Ethan, God has his hand on you, son. Um, I think your dad would, would testify to that as well. And I'm very eager to see uh, what he does with you in your life. You too, Wyatt, but I just mean it's great to see your son uh, like this. I'm sure you agree with that. Um, but as we, as we need to bring this to a close, let me just ask each of you, Wyatt, you're a father with three sons. They're all sons, right? Yep, teenagers. Okay. And so what would you say to another father who has sons about getting into their heart and into their life and, and interacting with them? What, what words can you say to another father who has some sons who are probably either exposed to pornography already, deeply involved, or who may get that way in the future. What, what words do you have for somebody like that? I, I would just start with the, um, just the fact that children are a blessing, not a burden. And we fathers have been called by God to shepherd. I mean, it's, this is my little church, the most important one. And um, I'm, I'm the pastor of this church, this home. And so that's, I, I got to take that calling seriously. And if I take it seriously, it means number one, I got to look in the mirror. Like what, what, what is being hidden? If you're suffering in silence, um, 
you know, not confessing and not being honest and not being transparent is, is the devil's playground. And he wants to keep you in the dark. He wants to keep you in bondage. He wants to keep you can, and the, the, the less confessional you are, uh, the longer the sin will reign. So we got we to gotta honestly deal with our own hearts. Well, what do we need to turn from? What is God showing us? And I, my, my prayer is that as people are watching this, that there's a heart check. You're never going to be able to help someone else. You can't lead others if you don't lead yourself. So you got to be in the word. You got to be in prayer. But even then, I was, I was self-deceived. You, you got to let go of that idol. You can't just hold on to it and say, Jesus, help me, help me, help me. You got to be willing to, to let that go. Um, and it's repent. Um, and then when you're able to do that and have friends that can hold you accountable to that, then you can go to your, your sons. And that's important too, because um, there, someone's going to teach them might as well be you. And they're going to learn from somewhere and someone. And I would prefer my kids to hear truth from God's word through me than from some of your friends. <laughs> yeah, that was really helpful. That's really good. Uh, Ethan, I bet you respect your dad for coming to you and saying, hey, I want to interact with you and, and take you through this course. Um. Well, for just some advice for other kids out there who have who have a father, um, if if like they are even watching this video or even somehow find it, um, if if you feel that you're being like like the um your dad is, is getting mad at you because he hates you, well, it's mostly because of dis discipline. And um, discipline ha um, can really help um, your uh, your life because um, not only does it prevent some things, it can pre prevent um, like let's say you uh, um, you you punch a kid at school um, and then your your dad gets really mad at you for doing that. Um, that's because they don't want you to punch anybody. <laughs> it, then you won't get in trouble. So then that should tell you in your head, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this anymore. So it just really teaches you not, not what not to do. So basically, people like this guy can tell you what to do and what not to do, even, even your mothers as well. That's a very good point and wise comment. Um, would you guys say that you're free from habitual sin? We're never free from sin in the sense of we can always be tempted, we have flesh, uh, and we can stumble in many ways. Um, but would you guys describe yourselves as free from this habitual plague? I mean, um, it doesn't always have to be a habit. It could be addiction. It could be anything that, that you've done. But um, there's always a solution to every kind of sin, which is God. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say for that. Yeah, the element of freedom mm -hmm. you, you talked Just about. Freedom. And, you know, the, the, the secular counseling world will have you say that, that um, addictions are diseases that you will have your entire life. Now, granted, yes, you'll have struggles the rest of your life. But there's no talk of freedom. There, there's, there's no talk of breaking those chains and bondage and so when you start living in that freedom and victory it's like fresh air like wow like the lord loves me in my state of victory as much as he did in my state of defeat like oh my goodness that's incredible to me that's what softens my heart and that's what like he changed when, when he changes your thinking he changes your desires like i don't want to do that anymore i want to live for the lord i want to please him because when i do that that's when i'm free 
that's when I'm victorious. That's when the peace and the love and the hope and the change of the Lord happens in my heart, happens in my mind, happens in my mouth, everything, it permeates every single aspect. Because when you're hiding just a little bit, it's just like this virus. You know, we're talking about COVID, you know, <laughs> that virus that just permeates and it affects every, it stains everything. Yeah, that, that so. just reminds me of something. So there, there's, um, there's these little coal things where they burn coal and it spreads into the air. It pollutes the air as well. And sin is like something that pollutes and it spreads because mm -hmm. when, when the smoke goes up, it's because when you see it come up, it just, it goes up in a thin line and then grows when you, when you look at it. Um, and it just spreads, but um i th i think i don't know if this is true but maybe the push of one button can can stop the coal burning i'm not sure but that's what i'm going with and <laughs> that smoke can just stop and um and then a little bit of cleaning in the air can stop the pollution and um <laughs> a creative mind i don't have. i don't know what they're <laughs> what what they're called but uh i don't i think they're called coal burning areas but um it, me and my brothers just call we used to call them smoky bokies when we were younger but sin pollutes <laughs> sin pollutes for sure yeah. yeah that's exactly right well you guys i want to thank you for coming and taking time to share with me today i know that what you said is going to reach the hearts of other people so thanks for taking time to come talk to me thank you so much um, one more thing before we close. Um, uh, yeah. Um, taking what what um, everything was said, it doesn't. It actually really matters of the heart. So, because when I used to do some of these studies, there were some times when I was when I, because I woke up in the morning, I I um, worked out, then I went to do my devotion. So when I did that, sometimes I was tired and just skipped through it. I didn't, I didn't care. It's just mm. the element of your heart. It's, yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's, right. that's, that's where it all originates from, isn't it? Or it's, or it's not. It can also depend what? on time of day because that's yeah. just for me because I woke up early and I was just tired. Yeah, that's exactly right. All right. We will bring this to an end, and I'd like to ask you guys right now, you're going through the follow-up course together? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, come back, and when you're done with that course, I would love to have a follow-up interview with you guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I can try to bring the others, too. That would be awesome. All right. I'm going to stop the recording.